Hey guys, what's going on? It's Clever Techy, and in this video, I'm gonna give you an introduction to Git and GitHub. Git is a program that tracks changes made to files as you're working on a project, building history over time so that you can keep track of all the different versions and changes that you're making to files as you're working on a project. And GitHub allows you to work on the same project efficiently with other people by keeping track of all the changes each person is making to the project. The first thing we're going to do is install Git on our computer by going to a website called gitforwindows.org if you're using Windows and just click on the download button, download Git and install it on your computer. Also go ahead and create an account at github.com if you don't already have one. I already have my account created so I'm just going to go ahead and log in. Once GitHub has been installed on your computer, go to start and type git bash and open the app. And this is the command that we're going to be using to interact with Git from our computer. So first, let's go ahead and navigate to the directory where we're going to be creating our project by typing cd and then the name of the directory. In my case, it's c localhost. And let's also create the directory with mkdir command. I'm going to name the directory my new repository and this is the folder where we're going to be initializing our git repository. So let's go ahead and switch to that new directory. And now we're ready to initialize our first git repository with the git init command which creates a new local repository. git init and now we have initialized empty git repository in our folder. So let's first create a new file in our repository by typing touch my new file name. So at this point we have created a new file but git isn't doing anything to the file yet. So if we type git status and untracked files means that we haven't added the files to the staging environment yet. And to understand what's going on here, first let's look at the workflow of how Git works. And we start with the working directory where we have just added our new file. And the next step is to add the file to the staging environment, also known as the index. And to understand staging environment a little bit better, you can think of the staging as giving the file to the librarian before it gets put or committed into the actual library which is going to be our local repository. So first thing we're gonna do is add our file to the staging environment from our working directory where our file is located at this point which is at C localhost my new repository and you can see that uh, our file is located in this directory at this time. So let's go ahead and use git add file name which will add our file to the staging environment and make it ready for the commit. git add my new file name and now let's type st git status and you can see that we have now we're now listing the changes to be committed so that means the file has been added to the staging environment and it's ready to be committed to the actual local repository. The next step is to commit the file, which will add it to the local repository. And for that, we're going to use git commit command. And this commits all stage files to the version history, which means it commits or adds all the files to the local repository. And for that, we're going to type git commit command with dash m and then the commit message because every time we commit files to the repository we must provide some kind of message with our commit describing what kind of changes we have made or what kind of files we have added. So let's type git commit dash m and then the message created new file my new file name txt. So we have just added or committed the file to our local repository so let's type git status again and as you can see there's nothing to commit working tree clean 
that means we have no files in the staging environment. So by typing git log, you can see that we have created new file, my new file name .txt, which is the message that we have given to our commit. The next thing we're gonna do is create a git branch and branches let you add new features to the project without affecting the main project. And we do this by typing git checkout dash b and then the name of our branch, which we're gonna name my new branch. And this will immediately switch us or check us out on this new branch. And to see which branch we're on, we can type git branch command and you can see that we are now on our new branch, my new branch, indicated by the asterisk. And the command prompt has also highlighted our new branch with green, indicating that this new branch is currently selected. So now we're ready to create changes on our new branch without affecting our master branch. So now we're just gonna create a new file on this new branch. Let's name it my file branched. So now we have created this file and it has only been created on my new branch. So the master branch at this point hasn't been affected. And if I type git status, you can see that uh, we have untracked files. And now let's go ahead and add this file to the staging environment, just like we did on the master branch by typing git add the name of our file my file branched and now let's also go ahead and commit the file from the staging environment create a new file my file branched now let's type git status and the file has been added to the local repository so we have a clean working tree now if we type git log which shows us full change history on the branch my new branch let's see what happens here so you can see all the changes we have made so far and and git is showing us that we have added the file my file branched on our my new branch and that we have added the file my new file name on master branch so at this point my file branched only exists on my new branch that we have just created and my new file name only exists on master branch. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna update our master branch with the changes that we have created on the new branch by using git merge. And first we're gonna switch to the master branch by typing git checkout and then the name of the master branch which is master. Now let's type git branch to make sure that we're on the master branch and yes we are. So at this point, in order to merge the new changes from my new branch to the master, we're going to type git merge and then the name of the branch, which is my new branch. So at this point, git has merged the changes that we have made at my new branch to the master branch. So let's go ahead and type git log. And now both files exist on the master branch. So that is how we can create additional branches to create new features for a project without affecting the main master branch and then merge those changes back to the master branch once we're happy with the updates that we have made. And now we're going to go ahead and create a new repository at GitHub. And GitHub allows us to work on a project with a team of people. So go ahead and log into your GitHub account and under repositories, click on the new button. And we're gonna give this repository a name. Let's name the repository my new repository. And now since we already have a repository, we're gonna go ahead and push an existing repository from the command line to GitHub by using the git push command. And first we're going to add the origin with git remote add origin and provide this URL here. So just go ahead and copy this whole thing here and paste it inside of the command. 
press enter and now we can use the keyword origin instead of this long URL and the origin refers to the remote repository so next we're going to use the git push command to push our local repository to the git remote repository and for that we're going to go ahead and type git push dash u origin master and now we'll just push the master branch to the remote git repository and if you're pushing to git for the first time from your computer it might ask you to log in with your credentials since I've already used github on my computer it's not asking me for any login details and it looks like everything went well so let's go to github and check our my new repository and now you can see that our repository has been pushed so both files are now showing up in our github repository and if we wanted to push the other branch which is my new branch we would type git push origin and then the name of our branch which is my new branch and now we'll go ahead and push my new branch to the git repository so now let's refresh the page and you can now see that we have two branches and if you click on this link you can see that we now have my new branch as well as the master branch in our project now let's go ahead and create a new branch at github by clicking on this button and give our new branch a name second branch so now we have three branches and let's go ahead and make some changes at the second branch and we're just gonna create a new file let's name the file new beginnings and just type some text inside the file and press on the big green commit new file button to commit the file to the repository so we now have a second branch that we have created with the file new beginnings so at this point the file new beginnings does not exist at the master branch so what we're gonna do is merge the second branch to the master from github and for that we're gonna create a new pull request so go ahead and click on the new pull request button and then you can provide a comment of what kind of changes have been made so we can just say the new file new beginnings has been created then click on the green create pull request and the github will go ahead and merge the contents of the second branch to the master branch so since we are the moderator of this project we can go ahead and merge this pull request and confirm the merge and this pull request has now been merged to the master branch so that is how we can also create branches at github and have other people or contributors creating pull requests which will change or add functionality to our project and us being the moderator of the project we can decline or approve those changes at this point our remote repository which is the one at github and the local repository are different since we haven't created the second branch at our local repository and in order to update our local repository from the remote repository we're gonna use a git pull command and the git pull command fetches latest changes from the origin and merges those changes so what it does is it gets all the changes from github which is our origin and then updates our local repository with those changes so let's go ahead and type git pull origin master 
to get all the updates from the master branch. And now you can see that the new file, newbeginnings.txt, has been added to our master branch because we have already merged that file from the second branch at GitHub. And if we type git log, you will see information about the pull request that we have made from the origin master, which is our GitHub account, and the commit that we have made, which is the create new beginnings txt file so that is the log about the pull request and the kind of information that was updated to our local repository you can also see the push request that we have made to the github account from our my new branch and the commits that we have made my file branched and my new file when we pushed to our github repository from our local repository so that is the log about the pull and push requests that we have made. And that's it for this quick introduction video to Git and GitHub. If you guys like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to download the diagrams and cheat sheets that you see in this video, please go to patreon.com forward slash clevertechie.